Hey, welcome back to the fourth lesson of our tutorial series on how to create 2048 in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be getting ready for being able to combine the different fill prefabs. But before we do that, we need to set up the relationship between the cells and the fill objects that are in the cells. Now, before we get started, I'd like to take a second to tell you about one of our newly updated mobile games called Presidential Slap. We all know the 2020 elections are coming up in November, and politics, frankly, is a very volatile subject. But if you're like me and you enjoy having to laugh about things, then I think you'll like Presidential Slap. We initially created this game before the 2016 elections, and it featured more of a whack-a-mole style game between Trump and Hillary. The main purpose of this game was to create somewhat of a mock poll, where players are voting against the candidate that they don't want to win the election, and players are able to vote or slap more than once. Now not to brag or anything, but our app did accurately predict the 2016 elections, and we'd like to see if it correctly predicts the 2020 election. And so if you like our tutorials and you want to show your support for our channel, then please download Presidential Slap for free on either Google Play or the Apple App Store. We have links in the description below. Now on with the lesson. All right, so to get started with being able to combine the fill objects that are in our 2048 grid, we want to create a new script. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder. We'll right click, go to create, C sharp script, and we'll name this cell 2048. Let's then open it up. Inside the script, we want to create some new variables to hold reference to the neighboring cells of our current cell. And these are all going to be public variables. So this is going to be public and then cell 2048. And we'll call this one right. We can then duplicate this line and rename it to be down. We'll then duplicate it, rename the next one to be left, duplicate it, and rename this one to be up. Let's then save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we want to select our cell prefab and we'll attach our cell 2048 script to this prefab. Then in the hierarchy, we need to go through each cell object and set these variables to the corresponding objects if available. So for this top left cell, we need to set the right and the down variables but then left and up will remain null. So I'm just gonna go through these real quick. And a quick way to set these variables is if you lock the inspector for each cell object and then use the scene view to select the neighboring cells. All right, so there I have all my variables set and hopefully they're all correct. Now what we've just created with these variables is a form of a linked list. A linked list is when you have a class that has a reference to another instance of the same class. And so you can essentially create a chain of objects that you can traverse through. And so in other words, this top left cell has reference to its neighbors and its neighbors have reference to their neighbors and their neighbors have reference to their neighbors and so on. Now at this point, we want to create another script, but this will be for the fill objects. So let's right click, go to create, C sharp script, and we'll call this fill 2048, and we'll open it up. Now inside this script, we want to create some variables. The first is going to be an int, and we'll call it value, and the next will be a text variable, and so we need to add the unity UI namespace. and we'll call this value display. Now we can remove the start and update functions and we'll create a new public function of return type void and we'll call it fill value update. We then want to have an int parameter and we'll call it value in. Inside this function, all we have to do is set value equal to value in. And then we want to update the value display variable. So we'll type value display dot text equals value dot two string parentheses semicolon. And one more thing that we need to do before we can save this script is we need to make the value display variable a serialized field. We can then save this script and go back to Unity. 
Inside Unity, we'll select our fill prefab and then we'll attach the fill 2048 script to this prefab. We then need to set the value display variable and so we'll just select the child text object and drag it into that field. The last thing that we'll do for this lesson is open up our game controller script and inside the spawn fill function, rather than just debugging the value of the fill object when it's instantiated, we want to pass that value into the fill value update function of the newly instantiated fill prefab. So to do this, we want to create a new local variable of type fill2048, and we'll just call this temp fill comp. We'll set it equal to temp fill dot get component and we'll look for fill 2048. We then want to call temp fill comp dot fill value update and we'll pass in a two. We can then copy these two lines of code and paste them into our else statement and then we'll change the two to a four. Let's then save this script and we'll go back to unity. And at this point, we'll play through our project. So now when I press the spacebar, you can see that our fill object is instantiated and the child text object is populated with the value of that fill object. And there we have a fill object with the value 4. Awesome job, you made it to the end of the fourth lesson of our tutorial series. Keep going. The next lessons are going to get a bit more difficult, but just stick with it and by the end you'll have a working 2048 game. Now just a reminder, if you do have a hard time with the code, you can always become a supporter on our website to get access to the cut and paste code.